Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Comic Book Burrito, the only show that recognizes Bouncing Boy as a horrible terroristic threat. My name's Darian. My name's Landon. And today, we have a plethora of stuff to talk about. We got Marvel, we got DC, we got games, you name it, we got it. Let's talk. Landon, how have you been doing? I've uh, been doing all right. Just finished uh, Peacemaker this weekend. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, it's pretty good. And, um, it was more than pretty good. Oh, well, Snyder shields don't think so, but we, I will not get into that today. Nope. Um, uh, I haven't really been doing much besides that, honestly. Horizon came out yesterday. I've been just playing that game was. Uh, how yep. about you, though? Uh, I played Horizon 2 as well. I just got that today. I will play that probably after we're done recording tonight. Um, yes. <laughs> but, uh, let's see what happened this past week. I mean, obviously, I watched Peacemaker 2. Uh, mm-hmm. very good. We'll talk about that. Um, they had a big thing on Sunday. I don't know if you ever heard of it. It's called Super Bowl. Uh, first I've heard of it. <laughs> oh, all right. Well, it's this game where you know men in tight pants uh wrestle each other and for a ball, but like uh, that's what you hold on. I like <laughs> focus. You started on the tight pants first, so <laughs> you know, never mind. Continue. <laughs> well, I'm okay. They wear helmets too. Um, <laughs> But we, the only part that I care about and the only part the show pertains to with the Super Bowl are the contents in between the Super Bowl showings, which are the commercials. And normally there are Marvel trailers or DC trailers in these commercials. And this year there was. So, yeah, we got mm. that Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness trailer. What a, what a trailer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. Um. So I guess we can get started with talking about that. You want to? <laughs> yeah, I guess I guess we should. I guess we should. All right, let's talk about the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness trailer. I'm not gonna say spoilers because why haven't you watched it? But um, our, uh, thoughts going into this, we already kind of expected we'd be getting some. We thought it was gonna be a TV spot, but it was a full blown trailer. We had a TV spot, and then we got a full blown trailer that came out yeah. like the day of that we would be getting that. Hmm. I mean, well, I was, yeah, I was thinking we were going to see a spot, and I guess that rumor, uh, I mean, you saw, I guess that was not true whatsoever. Yeah, that wasn't. However, um, kind of hate it because I. We did get we did get a reveal. <laughs> it was. Yeah, we did we did get something revealed, and he, did you see he was um, he it was so annoying because he literally he's all like. Yeah, he he uh, said, I've been doing this for 60 years. He was like, <laughs> he, he said, that could have been anyone imitating my voice. I'm like, are you serious? Are they <laughs> doing this whole thing again? We saw you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I literally we, saw your bald head, sir. I saw the shiny. It was either that or the Spillman himself. Dr. Spillman. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. 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 No one had. Everyone was Nobody. so confused just then. They were like, huh? "In due time, what? my friends. In due time." Yeah. Well, let's hope, dude. <laughs> let's uh, hope. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I a lot of effort into this. Anyway, so let's get in, let's get into this trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there's a breakdown of everything that's been revealed. And I'll talk about some little nods and stuff. Um, we the first little tr- trailer that we got was at the end of um. Spider-Man, correct? Uh, yes. Yeah, so this is the rest, most we've seen of it so far. And boy, oh boy. <laughs> so, uh, let's get into Nothing like any other movie, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, here's a breakdown. One of the first images glimpsed is that of Doctor Strange's reflection in a broken watch. As MCU viewers would no doubt remember, Stephen was once very bound to material things, including his vast collection of expensive watches. Ultimately, he was left with only one that was as broken as his hands. As well as symbolizing his spiritual growth, it also foreshadowed Doctor Strange's more literal breaking of time to defeat Kaecilius and Dormammu. In the case of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, it likely hinted at the splintering of timelines into whole other parallel realities, with Stephen's reflection representing the kind of variance teased later in the series. Teaser. Um, you want to, you know what I think? What do you, what do you think? Like, uh, I think we see, uh, Kaecilius again or Dormammu. Oh, well, they're hey. not, Dormammu's not dead. Yeah. yeah. He's still uh, up yeah, in the I, dark. I, I, I so is Kaecilius. 
Mm-hmm. And so I was thinking we might see them again. But also, we hear the line in the trailer. Mordo says, um, he said, oh, what did he say? He said something to strangers like you, uh, you did something we're supposed to or something like that. Like, uh, mm-hmm. now reality is in full collapse. Because yeah. he, meddled, he meddled with stuff he wasn't supposed to. And I'm pretty sure he's not talking about what happened in Spider-Man. Because really, he didn't do much to, like, ruin the, <laughs> break open the multiverse. Like, like, talk, oh, so, yeah. yeah, there is. Because it felt like he kind of fixed it. Yeah. Um, you know what I think I, he's talking about? Because Steven was, has manipulated people. time so much. Like, he's mm. uh, reversed time, stopped Dormammu, and he... Uh, He's just all done all kinds of stuff in like with time. Maybe that's maybe that stuff is not a permanent effect. Or not permanent effect. How do I explain this? Like where so you know how he reverses time and stuff, right? Yeah. He's not on the same timeline reversing it, right? It splits into another timeline where he where he did that reverse would, it. That would make that would be interesting. And it, kill, and it killed him. So he's constantly making these separate timelines. And you know how he sees that New York that's like kind of crumbled together? Yeah. That's when all the timelines come together and it mm-hmm. creates this whole mess. I I um I saw something like that in a um I believe a uh, it was a Rick and Morty episode. So that's why I kinda have that idea. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh that'd be kind of interesting. I was if that's thinking um let's see, what was my train of thought that I was going through? Um I think that because he messed with time so much that mm-hmm. it essentially like broke it, <laughs> and oh, yeah. that's why yeah, all this fun. is happening. Because it's a consequence mm-hmm. of all the stuff he's done throughout the movies. Yeah, because uh, he was inexperienced. Yeah. Still, yeah, anyway, or, um, let's continue um, on. Just what <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's continue on. Doctor Strange appears to find himself in a parallel world, suffering from a dramatic state of decay as he rushes through some gates to surveil the environment. That's the city we were talking about. There's also a glimpse of him walking through a derelict version of the Sanctum Sanctorum. After Loki's jaunt to a similar place turned out to be the void at the end of time, this could be something similar. The reason for its decay could be that it was victim of the, the, of the rumored Doctor Strange 2 villain Shuma Gorath, who now we have uh, found out they it is Shuma Gorath, but they had to change his name because the people that owned him, uh, I can't remember the company's name. Uh, uh, I, thought, I thought it was Universal. It is not Universal. It is not somebody universal. else. Okay. They own Shubagoreth, so we. But he was integral to the story that they wanted to tell, so they took him, but renamed him. Now he's Gargantos, which is another villain in the comics. But who cares? <laughs> Uh, the ancient being may have set its sights on the main MCU timeline, having glimpsed it during Spider-Man No Way Home's multiverse tearing event. That happened? Mm. Uh, yeah, that's right. true. He could have seen uh, when the multiverse tore open that one time. Uh, yeah. Shima Gorath could have been, been out there and found the I'm universe. Just, I'm just going to call Garganta Shima Gorath still. I don't care. <laughs> uh, I, what I if mean, one day they do introduce Shima Gorath? What's the deal? I mean, they look no fine. I'll fine. It'll be Gargantos renamed to Shumagora. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's um, Gar- that's, Gar- that's Gargantos. <laughs> Let's just mix them up in my head. That work. Um, another quick shot appears to be from the wedding of Christine Palmer, Rachel McAdams, coming back from the first movie. Uh, mm-hmm. Though Stephen Strange is present alongside Michael Stolbarg's Nicodemus West. Uh, I'm not sure who that is. The chance that he's the groom is probably slim to none. It could be another universe, but the most likely explanation is that Christine survived Thanos' snap and formed a new relationship in the five years that Doctor Strange was gone. It shall remain to be seen if her new husband will be any anybody of note or if Doctor Strange's reactions will echo a certain variant that's been confirmed to return. Uh, I heard a crazy theory. Oh. Uh, that we start this movie going through doc- all this Doctor Strange stuff and he has the nightmares and all this stuff going on. Yeah. But... It's actually not our Doctor Strange. We're focusing on a variant Doctor Strange for like the first half of the movie until it switches to, to show that that wasn't our Doctor Strange, and that was the Defender oh. Strange. And apparently, Defender Strange is the villain is going to be the one of the villains at the end of it because he's that zombie Doctor Strange. Apparently, huh? Okay. Oh, so we're going to see like a freaking we're going to see the origin. Oh, 
or something. Okay. This okay, feels I'm so Sam there. Raimi. <laughs> it is very Sam Raimi. The, I, that's like, I'm super excited to see that part because apparently Toby McGuire is supposed to be back in the movie. That's the like, well, oh, if he's part of the. Well, I'll get into that in a minute. Uh, don't, right. don't, don't you dare! Don't even give me that thought. Cause I know exactly what you're about no. to say, but do do, do continue. Do he's continue. he's part of a certain group of people. Shut up! Shut up! It ain't gonna happen. <laughs> you just saying that because you you want it to happen so bad. Uh, oh yeah, of course I do. <laughs> I'm trying to help you out. <laughs> All right. The teaser for Doctor Strange: Multiverse of Madness reuses the various warnings of Wong and others in opening voiceovers. When combined with the new imagery, they afford in a much more ominous air than what when delivered in the well-reviewed Spider-Man: No Way Home post-credit scene. <laughs> that notion is further hammered home by the prominent sight of a calling crow. A bird that is often viewed as mystical omens of misfortune and even death. It also is worth noting that crows have been long associated with the mythological and Marvel Comics version of Morgan Le Fay, herself a powerful sorceress with ties to the Black Knight in the comics. Perhaps a foreshadowing? Either way, it could hint that there will be at least one major casualty in Doctor Strange 2. And I think I know who's going to be. Uh, Won't say it. Ooh, I agree too. Yeah, uh, but I, I, got, I got like basic, basically proof. I mean, like we've I'm, seen I'm, him in peril in like almost every scene he's in in these trailers. This trailers yeah. for this, and yeah, but also hear this: Wong is the Sorcerer Supreme. So in order for that to fall back to Doctor Strange, who's supposed to have that title, Wong would have to die. <sighs> Ooh, no, <laughs> no, like dude, I don't. Want and Wong's dying die. breath needs to be: "You're the Sorcerer Supreme now." <sighs> Dude, Strange is going to go old school on someone. I'm saying, he's going to go OP, I swear. He's going to go full on Sam Raimi. Full on Sam Raimi on someone. I mean, literally, I, I, we'll talk about it here in a minute, but I think this movie is perfect for Sam Raimi purely because... I think of, this movie is going to be going to... I mean, I love, 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 love Spider-Man No Way Home, but I feel like this movie is going to blow it out of the water. Yeah, um... I mean, I'm gonna. I mean, I don't know if I could say like the hype is for this movie is like almost equal to Spider Man right now. Oh, yeah, Spider Man No Way Home for me will probably be. I want to watch that one more, but this one, I I can already tell you right now, this will be the better movie, better multiverse movie out of the two. Yeah, if you want to go by like technical, not technical, but like a uh, like really look it down with like story wise and all that and other things, Mm -hmm. then yeah. Dark Strange is most likely gonna be better. Yeah. But this this movie looks like like No Way Home was a history of Spider Man. This one is a history of Marvel movies with like old, old school, old OG Marvel, like ones I was watching as a kid. Yeah. And so I feel I think they got like a perfect director to do, do that. A, a director who worked on the OG <laughs> movies. So mm-hmm. you know and so yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get more to that here in a minute. What you know, what we mean by like OG uh, Marvel characters coming in. Mm-hmm. Um, to the sound of Doctor Strange's screams, a figure is seen falling through some mysterious plane of reality. Based on these those accompanying screams, the obvious answer is that it's Stephen Strange himself, which would make it something of a callback to a similar experience falling through dimensions in the first Doctor Strange movie. Uh, that being said, the slightly different look, including a ponytail, could mean that it's Defender Strange, who serves alongside Hulk, Namor, and Silver Surfer on the titular team in the comics, and is widely rumored to be part of Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Which he, uh, I think that's talking about the Illuminati? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really I specify. So. But, um, mm-hmm. so the equally rumored Clea also assists that team, which means the movie could visit her reality, making Defender Strange variant in the sequel could also explain their slightly feminine features. After all, as proven by Sylvie in the Loki series, variants aren't always the same gender. Then again, it may actually be Clea herself or someone else entirely. It all will become clear in the months leading up to Doctor Strange 2. Um, mm-hmm. Also, while he's falling through this portal, um, it's star-shaped. So, And we did see America Chavez and Doctor Strange at one point in the trailer falling through di- uh, an animated reality and into a dinosaur place. Yeah, if you look, I mean, I sent you the picture, but if you look at the clip, just right, you see them fully animated as well. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, X-Men 97, <laughs> Darren, you were right. I'm sorry. 
I mean, I, I mean I, no, I'm still going to call bull because I don't think that's what it is. I do. What because you remember concept art? Anime? You remember concept art from Doctor yeah. Strange showed at Presser X and the old, like, animated looking chair? Not animated, but like the gold chair that floated. Yeah, there. yeah, yeah, the gold chair. So, yeah. I, I mean, but that's I where he went. Because at the end of X Men, end of the X Men anime series, he left. And that's where he went. He went cosmic. Well, he became the Illuminati. He became part of the Illuminati. He went and founded the Illuminati. That'd be awesome. Uh, anyway, here we go. Let's continue on. Yeah, but um, I was like I was saying though, I think when they're traveling through realities, America Chavez and Doctor Strange, Defender Strange is going to fall through. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah, talk yeah, about, let's talk, awesome. about America, let's talk about America Chavez, uh, new member, new member of the Marvel Universe, um, known as a member of the Young Avengers. So another Young Avengers member we have coming connect with Kate Bishop and. Uh, Billy and Tommy from WandaVision and uh, Isaiah Bradley's grandson in Falcon and the Soldier. Uh, I think yeah. that's all that they revealed so far. I mean, lo- kid Loki, sort of, but I mean, he is. Yeah, one I wonder. Of them, but he, uh, yeah, my brother, my brother keeps mentioning kid Loki. I'm like, man, I wonder how they're gonna bring him back. I mean, I'm guessing season two of Loki, but <laughs> who knows. Yeah, who knows? Uh, while audiences could be saying farewell to some characters during Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, they will also say hello to a range of newcomers, including the uniquely powered America Chavez, played by Zochi Gomez. Uh, the teaser offers the first official glimpse of her in action. With a trademark star emblazoned on the back of her jacket, America is seen tentatively exploring new surroundings, no doubt after kicking open a portal to the main MCU. Yeah, her power, she can um, travel the multiverse. Yeah. The portals. Uh, she's also been seen being saved by Doctor Strange and her later standing alongside him, Christine Palmer, at the opening of another magical doorway. All right, let's talk about Wong being in danger. Oh, well, I did want to point out real quick. I think, uh, I, if I'm remembering right, I believe that American Chavez was supposed to show up in Spider-Man No Way Home for, yeah. for, a, for a cameo. Is that right? Yes, at the end of it, apparently. So, interesting. I wonder if... Well, I mean, we'll talk again. We'll talk about it more later. But I wonder if maybe that's something we'll see in a thing we'll talk about later. Ever since he debuted in 2016's Doctor Strange, Wong became a firm MCU favorite. It is, it, this has eventually become the Wong cinematic universe, really. Is all this I mean, is. As, it should, as it should. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, that has only grown in subsequent outings, especially via Wong's crowd pleasing role in Shang-Chi's story. It appears, however, that even as the newly official Sorcerer Supreme claiming the title from Doctor Strange, Wong won't be exempt from having a precarious fate in Doctor Strange 2. A quick shot shows him with a distressed expression. The injuries to his face and the way his arms are seemingly held up at his side imply that Wong is the captive and potentially torturous mercy of a mysterious and unseen someone. Uh, I assume Wanda it could not be the. Yeah, I like I, well, could be the evil Doctor Strange. It could be, but I keep seeing like this red thing around him. I don't know if that's intentional to make you think it's Wanda, but who knows? Yeah, we already know that some stuff in this trailer is fake because um, I'm about to talk about it right here in a second, actually. So let me read this first. Um, uh, the Doctor Strange, the Multiverse of Madness teaser also offers a glimpse of Wanda Maximoff, played by Elizabeth Olsen, still in her, living in seclusion following the end of WandaVision. She's approached by Doctor Strange and presumably her self-grown orchard. She assumes he was there to punish her for her actions in Westview, but Stephen explains he's there to ask her for help. As such, it would appear that Scarlet Witch may not be a villain, as many have theorized. That being said, it doesn't mean she's not dangerous. Wanda's also seen in full Scarlet Witch gear while conducting a sinister-looking ritual. She could have learned how to split her forms. As such, it could be that she's more fully divided herself so she can pursue agenda aggressively while also maintaining a sidekick role to hide, the fact, to hide that fact and use Doctor Strange to achieve her goals from a different angle. That could mean Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness will offer the best of both worlds, more heroic and dark magic versions of Scarlet Witch, operating simultaneously and independent of each other. Uh... I want to point out that scene in the orchard. They show the exact scene later on, except Wanda's everything's red and burning in the background. Wanda's in full Scarlet Witch attire, but Strange yeah. is still in the same. See, well, like I, I don't know I, if that's the scene or if like it just changes mid scene. But like, what? It, it looked, like, well, I feel like I saw in the trailer that it showed that scene again, like the one from the from the end credit scene of No Way Home. Yeah, it did. And then it showed like that scene. I'm, I feel like it changes mid scene, like. They're talking with the whole time, but he at like, the very he end, like mi- uh, makes Wanda mad, and she just like like snaps. <laughs> yeah, like, I feel like it's gonna like cut. Like Strange is gonna like say something. 
Oh, or like about, like Westview make, about kids make, or something. Make a comment about something, and then she's gonna say that whole line right there. Like it doesn't seem fair. Yeah, and it's like very like oh, so it's about to go down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get through this quickly, and then we'll move on. Uh, the new Doctor Strange footage also potentially teases a realm that Marvel Comics readers have yearned to see on screen. This is teased by a shot of Doctor Strange opening an ominous door into a seemingly endless void full of similar doors floating around or embedded in wandering pillars. At the center, there's also a floating platform upon which an altar-like structure is built. This area looks very similar to the nexus of all realities in the comics. Given the multiversal nature of the adventure, it would make sense that the realm that serves as an intersection of the multiverse would factor into the story. Director Sam Raimi would also be the perfect person to bring up to life its guardian, Man Think, perhaps even played by Raimi's lifelong collaborator, Bruce Campbell. Uh, would you like Got Bruce him. Campbell to play Man Thing? Do I want Bruce Campbell to play Man Thing? Yes. Uh, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say it's something out of the ordinary. I'm, I'm not going to ask the most impossible thing that could happen. I would like for it to. I mean, I feel like it's almost a guaranteed. Uh, It'll be Bruce, it. Bruce Campbell is in this somehow. And that he could be Ash because in Marvel, Ash exists. Yeah. Like as I mean, a hero. Mm-hmm. Uh, all right. Let's uh, talk about Mordo. One thing I'm very interested in this movie. Another returning figure in the Doctor Strange tr- teaser is Mordo. Uh, played by Shawutul Ejiofor. Uh, despite making a vow against sorcerers in Scott Derrickson's original 2016 movie, Mordo has been absent ever since. Now sporting much longer hair, he's been ap- seen apologizing to Steven before nonetheless insisting he's the biggest threat to the universe. Of course, that could be a misdirect, as Marvel trailers are known for. If not, given that Strange is seen using similar spells as his evil counterpart, like unleashing monstrous forms from his body, Mordo may have a point. Whatever the case, the Doctor Strange um, footage shows Mordo and Doctor Strange locked in combat. It's been rumored that Doctor Strange 2 is introducing the Illuminati. It's possible Mordo's new look is an indication he's taken on a new role, or even that a different multiversal version of him has. So he could be part of the Illuminati. Um, mm-hmm. Let me read this. Let's just look through this to make sure there's nothing. Uh, shows him using what looks like uh, chaos magic. Uh, we see the Shumagorath monster fighting. Um, uh, America Chavez and Strange in the Street. And Wong tries to attack it at one point in this thing. Uh, we see footage of Kamartaj being attacked. And Wanda mentions uh, Vision at this point, which I thought was cool. Call said Viz had his theories or something like that. Yeah. Uh, but we see Kamartaj being attacked by some unknown force, whatever that could be. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw our first, our kind of first glimpse at, glimpse at Rintra, the big green bull that's uh, being introduced. He's like, a, he's like a giant green bull. That's all he is. Like, that's the best I can explain it. Um, let's see. Scarlet Witch taps into dark magic. We see her doing some kind of ritual. And it looks like she's at Kamartash doing the ritual, which is interesting. I also want to point out that we see at one point she's in Westview in her house in Westview from the very last episode. Yeah. You know who else is in Westview? Mm-hmm. Do you? Uh, do you know what else is in Westview? Mm-hmm. Uh oh, freaking uh, Agatha. Mm-hmm. Tell me she doesn't show up. All right. Uh-huh. Um, the first teaser concluded with a f- with a figure from Marvel's What If. People uh, people that watch it will recognize him. Uh, the evil Doctor Strange, Strange Supreme. Um, but this could not be him. This could be someone called Sinister Strange, which is in the uh, uh, captions for it. Uh, one thing this isn't revealing. Um, which happened in the trailer. The big thing, he's shown him going, being taken into custody. Like good things, like by Ultron bots, and then uh, he he gets brought into this room where there's six chairs, and there's like two people sitting in chairs. He's blocking one of them. And there's another guy walking, which might be Mordo or Blade. I heard Blade too. Um, mm, yeah. And then yeah, you hear, ball. perhaps we should tell him the truth. In a British, old British voice. And then a guy rolling the camera. When I tell you I screamed. <laughs> yeah, I, I did too. I was at my uncle's Super Bowl, Bowl party. And I like went to the bathroom to watch the trailer. And you were in the I bathroom. And like, your family just here. Ah! Like, like, well, I yelled out. Like, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> they, my, uh, like, they basically showed us Patrick Stewart. Professor X. Mm-hmm. I freaked yeah. out. 
Uh, but he says it's not him. So yeah, it wasn't him. I'm like, what? I'm Sad. like, man. Sadly, so, uh, he. I, it was Photoshop. I, I, well, I kind of wanted to roll my eyes. I'm like, are we seriously doing this whole thing again? Yeah, I mean, it was a Photoshop. They edited his voice. Oh my god, it was, it was a fake. A Marvel official edited his voice in there. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. What if they did? That would be like the biggest like <laughs> screw you to the fans. <laughs> Uh, if it was, uh, if it, it seems to be insane. The thing is, we well, don't know what to trust because, like, I can't even trust the movie cover. Because, I mean, you know, Andrew kept saying he wasn't in it, but, you know, we know how that went. And, and so, like, I mean, he, he's in it. He's in it. We saw him. You know, we didn't see his face. We're going to, you know. Yeah. I just, I'm just wondering when the second trailer will show up. And he is actually, we actually do see his face. Yeah. He's, I'm guessing sometime in April, so it ain't that far. It ain't that far. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, but that's all I got to talk about for Doctor Strange's two trailer, the first official trailer too. Um, so I guess we get to the ratings now. How, what would you rate this trailer? Uh, and uh, uh, right. Well, let's let's rate it out of five this time. Trailers will rate it out of five from now on, not ten. Okay. Um, I don't know. <laughs> how, many, how many multiverses of madness would you give this true? It's Kali. Uh, I'm gonna say a ten. I said, I know. Hold on, one out of five. <laughs> so five. I, I know. A, t- a ten out of five. <laughs> ten out okay. of five. Man. I'm gonna give this okay, a five. But, okay. Well, yeah. If I'm being serious, yeah, it's a five. Uh, it, yeah, it's pretty very good. good very good trailer. I watched it. I watched it a bunch. And, yeah. uh, that's good. I watched it three <laughs> times when it came out. We're not going to talk about the Moon Knight clip because mostly stuff we've already seen. Some of it was new. Uh, uh, but it's yeah, really like, it's not much to yeah. like dive into. Yeah, I'm only thing you see you see his uh you see his cape. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you see the cape shaped into a moon, and uh, I don't know what to call his battering moon ring. Moon ring. Moon ring. I, I kept wanting to say trademarked. That. We trademarked that. <laughs> moon rings. Okay, we'll go with that then. All right. Uh, yeah, that was our review of the Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness official trailer. Uh, let's get into some news now. That was a long talk. Uh, how mm. the ducks got teased for She Hulk? Shut up! <laughs> God, I, I want. Uh, Let is me read this it. like is it rumor or this is, this is like... confirmed? Basically, uh, Marvel okay. in the French magazine. I think it was Entertainment Weekly. They were talking about um, the French version of Entertainment Weekly. It was like a. It was like this got uh, you know translated from French. Okay. But they were talking about She Hulk, and they say a webbed future. Howard the Duck seems to be part of Marvel's plans again. In the What If series, he got married to Darcy Lewis. Does the Duck elected in 2009 as one of the strangest characters in the Marvel team by Time Magazine have a promising bright future? In any case, the She-Hulk series, which lands this year on Disney+, Plus, could reserve some What the Duck surprises. This should delight the lovers of this turbulent duck determined to do as he pleases. Yeah. So She-Hulk's going to be doing a case of assault with um, yeah. uh, Howard Duck assaulted somebody. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, awesome. he's, known, he's known to be a drinker. He could have tried to mess yeah. with some ladies or something and land himself I, in a court I case. Don't know how can they have not done a Howard the Duck short yet? I don't know. It would be so you know good. I've only seen him like, like a few times. We've seen him three in total? Twice. No, three. Oh, you talk well. And what if he was there twice? So yeah. Oh, maybe okay. Maybe three times. Oh, oh, oh dude, I didn't even think about what if. I was like, what do you mean three? What other? I'm talking about in MCU. No, you've seen him no, in the after one and we in saw, Endgame. We saw him in the after credit scene of Guardians. Was he in Endgame? I don't even count that Endgame. He was like he, barely he, there. He, well, he was in Endgame. I'm just saying, but I'm just well. Everybody knows him though. Well, not everyone, but like I just think if they did like a one like a thirty minute short. Of Howard the Duck, I think it would kill. I think it'd be awesome. Yeah, be interesting. Uh, all right, but yeah, Howard Duck's coming to She-Hulk. Um, yes. Little reminder for y'all out there um, that like watching these. They're actually really fun to watch. I enjoy them. Uh, Marvel Studios assembled the making of Eternals is on Disney Plus now. It was actually really cool to see how they did those fight scenes with the people hooked up on the wires, and they had like the they're out actually out in like like near the ocean and stuff. They were out like 
look like they're flying. Yeah. It looked like the funniest thing because they were like in the movie it was this big epic action sequence, people flying around shooting lasers and stuff at each other, but in like real life, it wasn't. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. It was but um you learn a lot of interesting info from those assembled things. And Kim Fai, you yeah. talked about the how Endgame was the final Avengers movie, which I don't know what he meant by that, but I guess we'll find out uh eventually. But yeah, just to let y'all know that that's out there, so I can go check it out. They also have the Hawkeye one, Shang Chi, uh, Black Widow, all the ones for all your shows that are on there, and some of the newer movies besides Spider Man. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ryan Reynolds, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, Ryan Reynolds posted the other day on social media a picture of him in the Deadpool costume with the Multiverse of Madness costume designer standing behind it, along with like a bunch of other people. He deleted it shortly after. But uh, I think he's going to show up. If they're introducing Fox characters, why not Deadpool, right? And I think he's going to show up in Multiverse of Madness. And I think I know how. Mm-hmm. And I told you about this earlier, Lynn. Uh Doctor uh, Strange is being taken in by the Illuminati, right? Mm-hmm. Yep. And gets thrown into a cell for the crimes that he's done, quote unquote. And then yeah. he's in the cell and he's like, oh, crap. And then he hears from behind him, Hey, Rumi. And he turns around and Deadpool's there. <laughs> uh, sure. We'll go with that. That's like the perfect uh, entrance for Daredevil. Yeah. Well, I, saw a, I mean, I don't know if this is real or not. I'm not confirming nothing, but I thought um, somebody kept passing around this photo oh, oh, yeah. of, an, of a unfinished uh, FX of a, of like a render of Deadpool in a cell. So... That would kind of cool. That would be cool. I just find it funny how like Doctor Strange is there by himself, no one he knows, and the only company he has is this like crazy dude. Yeah, you know, like <laughs> yeah, someone that will not shut great. up. That would be great. What is um? Because I don't know. I mean, I wonder if they put him there. Because have you ever seen De- Have you ever seen the Deadpool movies? Yes, I've seen both of them. Okay, so remember at the end of two, he starts like time traveling and stuff. Yeah, I think the TVA wonder- got him. They turn him into the Illuminati. The t- it, that would be cool. I mean, I think that would be a pretty smart way to bring them in there. Bring them in there. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but well, why not? They can do it. Yeah. All right. Bring losses and all that too, and Cable. Oh, please. Right. Yeah, didn't Josh Brolin confirm he was going to play Cable in the future of MCU? Uh, he didn't confirm it. It was rumored. Oh, okay, okay. Hey, well, please let that happen. Yes. All right. Let's see what's next. Ah. We know who's going to be directing Loki season two. It's not the same person from last time. Uh, the Moon Knight directors, Justin Benson and Aaron Moorhead, are going to be directing Loki season two. Hmm, okay. So we'll see when we watch Moon Knight well, how good Loki good season two will be. <laughs> yeah, I hope they do a good job because uh, uh, do you remember who did it before? Um. I did at one point, but not anymore. Let me look it up. Well, well, whoever did it, they uh, they killed it. So it was a lady by the name of Kate Heron. Kate Heron. Okay. Well, she did a fantastic job. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited. You know, hopefully these new guys can do just as good, if not better. Yeah, and we know that. Um, we know, uh, Gugu and Bothra is coming back as. Um, what was her name? The lady that ran the TV. Not ran, didn't run the TVA, but was like. Kind of like the one that answered yeah, to the from yeah, the yeah 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 she said she was R- Renslayer uh, Judge mm-hmm. Renslayer is coming back and Owen Wilson confirmed that he is coming back as well and that filming starts soon which is supposed to start in April I think you can't have Loki without Owen Wilson no so every Ooh, scene Loki's in Owen know. Wilson must be there as well and yeah, I'm also interested be. I haven't heard anything from the girl that played Sylvie. <laughs> But yeah, I would assume she'll be back. I'm interested to see where that story goes, well, and we'll meet uh, we'll meet Kang, possibly during this, and then he'll be in Ant Man. I don't know when that this yeah. show's supposed to come out next year, possibly mm-hmm. next summer. And Ant Man is yeah. When when is this filming? This is filming this in April. In April. Yeah. So okay, we so. get stuff, and also I have some news uh, about some DC stuff that just reminded me of here in a little bit. But yeah, I'm excited for Loki season two. I love season one. It was mm. just like it just felt so short. That was yeah, our was very it. first thing we reviewed on here. 
Mm-hmm. Yeah. Is it? Was it really? Yeah, it was on the very first episode. Wow. Talked. We talked about, and then the second episode was Black Widow. Dang, uh, you're right. I was at the. Uh, I remember I was at the beach when yeah. one of the episodes came out, and I was like, I, I'll be honest, I was probably one of the best feelings of my life, <laughs> like hearing the hearing the ocean and watching Loki. To be completely <laughs> honest. But um, yeah, right. I'm excited to see what you can do. Uh, here's some more uh, Disney Plus sort of information here. Something interesting to think about. And I want to theorize about it. The Hawkeye producer Trin Tran has teased that Jack Duquesne, who he knows, the swordsman, we didn't know, we didn't hear his name as swordsman, but that's who he is, uh, will return in the future. Um, so, I mean, obviously, well, he could, he'll could yeah, come well, back at some well, point, well, but I want to know how. No yeah, but um, I want to know how. Where do you think would be a good spot for him to show up? Uh, next, maybe the next, well, next Avengers movie, possibly? He could show up. Hawkeye, what? Hawkeye could get his. Well, he's not really an Avenger anymore. Kate could get uh, his help. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Uh, sure Is there a? Maybe he meets uh, Blade. <laughs> no, he's not, he doesn't fit in with Blade. It, it, funny enough, I thought about Blade for a minute. I'm like, what if Blade would work? Uh, he doesn't fit in with Blade. I'm wondering. Okay. Is, have they confirmed a Hawkeye season two or no? No, I doubt. I doubt okay. they'll do that. I will say, I mean, that's like that seems like the most. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Uh, the Bishop Woman. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, man, I've watched that scene so many times. Just, I'll go on Disney Plus and cut on the episode or uh, the finale and just watch all the Kingpin scenes. I watch all the Kingpin parts. Where he shows up and he was like an Avenger He's meddling in my affairs. And the Bishop Woman thinks she can up and quit her job like as if she worked for Goldman Sachs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, uh, I'm not too sure, but uh, well, I'm glad he's coming back. I mean, yeah, that Marvel money speaks. Hey. But yeah, uh, I can't really think of a thing where they could put it. I think um, Armor Wars. I think he could have an interesting uh, appearance in that, possibly. Okay. Yeah, maybe. he was pretty rich, wasn't he? Yeah. He could be buy, trying, maybe wanting to buy a, a little bit of some Star Trek. Yeah. yeah, illegally. So, or, I don't know. It's I'm going to be... When that show comes out next year, it's going to be so good. I can't wait. I They're filming it now, too. Good, unfortunately, it's not. I know. Hopefully, we get some leaked stuff here soon. Got a lot of good stuff coming next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we don't yeah, even yeah. we don't even know what's coming in 2024. We're we're bound to be getting some kind of news about that this year. I, 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 I know what's coming out in 2024. Deadpool three, uh, Marvel's Wolverine for PlayStation Five. <laughs> That's for like 2027. <laughs> don't don't tell me that. Don't tell me that. I'm, I'm praying it's not 2025 release. I swear if it is. I'm, I'm, I'm they couldn't pull that. Marvel's Avengers and and release the trailer like reveal trailer like. Nine years before the game comes out. I know, I know. Yeah, it did take. I remember that. I think I want to say it was like two years till we. I remember when they released it, and I watched it, and I was like, "Oh, this is awesome!" What is this? And I completely forgot about it until the game came out. (laughs) Yeah, until I remember they showed up like, "Yeah, we're gonna show off the game," and I was like, "Oh," and they're like, "What game? Oh, that game." (laughs) Yeah, you you hated that live stream because it's like nothing but Final Fantasy. Yeah, I don't like Final Fantasy. All right, I I love love it. (laughs) Moving on. Uh, bad news. The digital release of Spider-Man No Way Home has been delayed until March 22nd. <laughs> yeah, it was supposed to be March 11th. March 1st. One of the two. I think it was the first, actually. Uh, it's been pushed back three weeks. Well, for some happened? reason. What, did they give it explain, even say? No. <sighs> okay. Well, just a bit longer. Maybe they'll... Okay. But they got something to make up for it in the week before. Because rumored, though, but it's rumored by a lot of people, an extended edition of Spider-Man No Way Home with more Toby and Andrew scenes and all of the extended Matt Murdock scenes is releasing in theaters on March 11th. Well, I'm going to go see it again. <laughs> one week, say... It's like one week after the Batman, I think. Yeah, Kelly. March we'll be reviewing, hopefully. I will be a poor man in March. I'm going to have... <laughs> 
I'm gonna be a poor man all of this year. Man, we got so many movies. It's so much. Oh my god, so much money. And um, yeah, <laughs> Marvel we'll just takes so money. Marvel's a powerhouse. They have all the money. They have probably billions of dollars. Is but WB the one reason Disney? they won't bring Robert Downey Jr. back is because they don't want to pay him those billions of dollars because that's probably how much he costs. Yeah, he he costs one billion dollars for Avengers Endgame. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> that, that's I'm the reason like, they killed him off. They're I'm, like, yes, I'm like, I'm like ninety nine percent sure. They're like, yes, let's bring in J.K. Simmons. <laughs> and, and, and that was just up front. That's not back end revenue. So. Uh, let's see. Let's see how much uh, RDJ got for Endgame. I'm curious. I'm, I'm pretty sure he got like a billion dollars. RDJ Endgame salary. Fifty million. Fifty million? Are you really? Yeah. Huh. It says while well, uh, RDJ felt he was not paid enough, others were paid pittance. Uh, in comparison for the Avenger, the report quoted an insider saying some received only two hundred thousand for Avengers, and Downey got paid fifty million. But that might be the f- for the first one. I looked yeah, at hold on. All right, how did you make for Endgame? Seventy-five million, and for 2019's Endgame, according to Forbes. Hmm. All right, interesting. He only got six point one million in Age of Ultron. But unimportant information. Let's continue on. Um. All right, we're going to end this off with some Spider-Man news here. Okay. Uh, J.K. Simmons has teased his role in upcoming Spider-Man movies. He said, I think I'll be in them. Oh, that's, that's, uh, well, I mean, I'm sure he will be. Yeah, but I would love to see. I want, keep him around, please. <laughs> yeah, he's the only one that can play J.J. Anderson. Yeah. As far as Spider-Man. <laughs> Spider-Man. No, you, you want a staff that. job? You want a staff job? Anyone care what I want? I do. Shut up. Get up. <laughs> I wonder, dude. I, dude, I would kill if they brought back uh, freaking the dude I, from I would, the movie. That that dude. Yeah, I, yeah Ivan Ivan Rainey. Come uh-huh. on. Yeah. Bring him back. <laughs> Bring him back as Hoffman. <laughs> Bring back Mister um, Ditkovich. Mister Dick. Dude, I swear. Peter's in his apartment. That. And I he's swear, sitting in there. Really he, he gets a new landlord. They talk about it. All the tenants talk about it. He's in his house and he hears knock on the door. And he opens it. And Orange? right before you even have a chance to process, you go, Where's my rent? Where's my rent? <laughs> so, you mean rent? <laughs> I can't do it. He's <laughs> That's so great. I remember everybody was asking that guy from uh, Spider 2, Joe's Pizza or whatever, asking him if he was in the movie. <laughs> He was in No Way Home. He's like, no, I'm not. I wish I was there. <laughs> uh, oh, no. Uh, if, only, if only Harry Osborne, James Franco. <laughs> well, that ain't happening. <laughs> uh, well, maybe he's in the extended cut. Who knows? Who knows? He got out. He got five minutes out real quick. <laughs> All right. Um, I say into my Marvel news. Mm-hmm. Uh, you don't happen to have anything before we move on to Peacemaker. Uh, no, no, I have none. All right. all right, let's move on to the Peacemaker finale. Boy, oh boy, oh boy! It was good. That's good. I mean, it was good. I, 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 well, it was phenomenal. But yes. I, I just want to say that and move on. Yep. <laughs> it's not a rumor. No, we, we do have to talk about it. We do have to talk about it. It's not a rumor. All right. Um. So, uh, go ahead and say this. Spoilers. For Peacemaker, the finale, episode eight, it's cow or never. Um, so I don't even have to ask expectations. It was high. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I can tell you this. Uh, I was definitely right for me being worried. Giving episode seven a ten out of ten. I gave it a nine point five because in this one I can do what I really want to do. <laughs> this one, well, I'm giving this one a eleven. <laughs> I mean, holy crap! Impossible. Uh, it's possible in in the land of book. So. Okay. Well, let's talk about it. It saw John Cena's supervillain and his crew get ready to say, "Well, not really supervillain anymore, but according to Newsweek.com, it is." <laughs> um, he is in the comics. Yeah. Uh, Supervillain and his crew get ready to save the world by killing the cow. That is the only food source for the butterflies. But the episode is so much more than that. 
Let's get into it. The episode opens moments after the penultimate one finished, with Peacemaker still upset with Leota Adebayo, played by Danielle Brooks, for planting evidence on him on the orders of her mother, Amanda Waller, played by Viola Davis. Rather than hearing Adebayo's apology, Peacemaker prefers to make fart noises every time she talks, much to Vigilante's amusement. Some of what she says gets through to him. He shouldn't define himself by the death of his brother. This scene, as like awful as it was, it was hilarious. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's like, like fart yeah. noises. <laughs> Yeah, it, like it, um, Such, like childish people. Oh. Yeah, oh yeah, very, very much childish. Um, vigilante is again number one. So stupid. Oh, yeah, he's just he, he's a moron, and dude, I'd say my favorite part in this episode is what he's talking about the circle of life. Oh yeah, <laughs> but we'll get that. We'll get that later um, on. My favorite character, surprisingly, by the end of this, was Economos. <laughs> Yes, yeah, uh, that's well, Die Beard, right? Yes. Okay, sorry. Well, if we find it. out why it's Die Beard. <laughs> oh yeah, it's a, that part actually kind of me tear up. I mean, I was like, dang, and um, and I again, I I, I cried <laughs> during this episode. Right, I did too. I cried twice. You see what I'm saying? Like you're all like, "Why did you cry?" I was like, again, it's it's when when they when there's like flashbacks of Peacemaker's brother. I, I tear up. I don't know. Well, that's because you have that brother. Uh, yeah, I, connection. I younger brother. And it's like it's insane. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> uh-huh. you only have sisters. Yeah, so, so, that's all right. Um, anyway, so yeah, but um, Economos, Harcourt, and Vigilante. Turn. Well, I don't know. I love them all. Honestly, like Peacemaker's great. Harcourt, out of bio, Vigilante. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I love them all. I love them all. Economos, I just like, I loved him in the Suicide Squad, so I liked him in this. And Harcourt was cool. Mm-hmm. That, her, yeah. her scene at the end made me cries, but we'll oh, get into yeah. that. Uh, yeah. They arrive close to the barn where the butterflies are hiding the cow, and the team try and make a game plan for their mission, with Adebayo asking her mother for backup, and the group figuring out which Peacemaker's helmets they can use in their attack. She asked the Justice League for backup. She's like, can you send the Justice League? And uh, we never heard anything after that, but We'll get into mm. that later. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, we will. Yeah. Unfortunately, some of the helmets get lost in the process of their decision making since the anti gravity one floats away and eagerly drops the sonic boom helmet in the forest rather than on top of the barn. <sighs> Hang eagerly. <laughs> All right. Oh, so yeah. they, he, she says um, no gravity and it like floats up in the air. And this is the same scene they mentioned Green Arrow, which I mean, Obviously, I'm a huge Green Arrow fan. I know, I know you got excited for that. But, like, come on. You had to get excited, too. I mean, we haven't heard about Green Arrow in the DCEU yet until now. Yes, yeah, so apparently he exists, apparently. Yes. So. Give me, hey, this is, there's Queen no is excuse awesome. for him not to show up in the Black Canary movie when it comes out. Where is Remember Oliver? Yes. Where is Oliver? He's on an island. <laughs> he's somewhere. <laughs> um, he He's dead because he died in the CW. Now, that would be my dream if it was the CW Arrow. <laughs> but yeah, it, it wouldn't be. It wouldn't be. But that would be awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, like a more comic book accurate seat. Like, but it's the same guy playing. Oh yeah. yeah I mean, I know you'd be happy about hey, that. I I'll, want, be, I'll be like, oh okay. Come on. Or get a, <laughs> give me a classic Green Arrow. I want the like stupid mustache and beard with the, with like, the Robin, Robin Hood. Hood. Heck yeah, man! Give me that. <laughs> no, I'm, hey, I'm down with that. I'm That'd down be great, with that. man. <laughs> so many things they could do, but it's Warner Brothers, so they won't. Mm-hmm. Um, and eagerly, <laughs> they're trying to tell him to pick up the helmet. And he picks the helmet up and just flies. And they're like, oh, you're doing it. Good job. And everyone's like smiling. He just like turns right and goes, just drops it. He drops it in the middle of the woods. <laughs> and you can hear him like, like squeaking from up there. Yeah. I, I was dying laughing. It was oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> All right. Yeah, yeah Eagle is the best by far. By yeah. far. Uh, the team decide to fan out and find the aforementioned Sonic Boom helmet. And while alone, Peacemaker is accosted by none other than his father, Augie, uh, which is great. This is ripped from the comics. Um, his dad is in his head haunting him, like in the comics. Yeah. So it's good that it happens on here. Peacemaker killed the patriarch in the previous episode after Augie, dressed as his alter ego, the White Dragon, tried to kill him first. It's clear that the supervillain is struggling with his guilt over the death of his father because Augie taunts him mercilessly, saying that he will always control him, even from beyond the grave. The supervillain kills his father once more, and his ghost falls to the ground, revealing the helmet they were all searching for. Uh, now, this now they have the helmet 
now they have the helmet, team leader Amelia Harcourt says that it's up to John Economos to take it, place it as close to the cow as possible because the butterflies haven't seen his face. Economos, despite his concerns, proves to be a real trooper as he heads to the barn with the weapon while pretending to be a butterfly. Can I tell you how scared I was that this dude was going to die? Yeah, I kept thinking. I mean, I felt like everyone in this episode was at risk of dying. Yeah, I was on edge the whole time he was walking in there. Yeah. I was like, oh, yeah. Gonna, and then they're all like, yeah. Um, I can't remember the name, but the, the guy, the guy cop, he's all uh, like, yeah, who are you? If it's given, he kind of like calls him out. He's like, "Hey, who are you?" I was like, "Oh crap!" Yeah. You know, I was like, "Man." And he was like, like "What are you? Why are you going in there?" He's like, "This is bag." He was like, "Okay." <laughs> I was yeah, like, "What?" There, there's parts where I, I like stood up in this episode. I was like, "No," because no, no. I was watching this on my uh, phone during school. Because you because you told me that morning, like, "Hey, don't go on Twitter, social media, or nothing." Yeah, I got spoiled. And I was like, "Well, man, something crazy must have happened." So I watched it. And, How crazy like, did it have many crazy things? Oh, yeah, it, it did all right. Um, yeah, but he, <laughs> he manages to hold his own even as he's stopped by possessed Detective Fitzgibbon. But he sees the humongous cow, he panics and leaves the helmet behind. He was like, No more kaijus, no more kaijus. And that was a callback to Suicide Squad when he saw Starro and he was like, We got a freaking kaiju up in this. Oh, so yeah, like, yeah. Uh, so he's freaking <laughs> out about that. He saw mm-hmm. he dropped the bag and goes, No more kaijus, no more kaijus. Yeah, he, yeah, I saw that. And he's running out yeah, as Economist it. tries to make a break for it. He's accosted once again by Fitzgibbon, who tries to discern whether he too is possessed by a butterfly by asking why his beard is colored the way it is. And you know, he was, um, Economist is forced to admit he does dye his beard in a bid to look younger, saying that he didn't think anyone would have noticed until Peacemaker made so much fun of him over it. While the story does persuade Fitzgibbon enough to let him go, one of the butterflies discovers the helmet and they all start attacking Economist. Uh, then when that happened, sad. I was like, oh, no, 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 run. <laughs> and I was like, you can't run fast. <laughs> yeah, I started, well, I kind of teared up during that scene with um, the Connors. I'm like, like, dang, you know, like, I and Peacemaker, like, felt like you see, you know, it's just Peacemaker. You see, he, like, feels bad about it. Yeah. About it and stuff. When, and, I say, uh, when I say there's character development in this show, James Gunn. Oh, yeah. And you can't unfire a gun. You can't unfire a James gun. You cannot unfire his <laughs> Yeah. I mean, if crazy. you learn anything from watching this show, is that you can't unfire a James gun. It, it's it, like Except Marvel Studios did. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, are you yawning? What is this? This is exciting no, sorry, stuff. Sorry. For no, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> right. I'm just, it's just a force of habit. Economist I mean, is surrounded by butterflies. Crazy. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. he's surrounded by butterflies all vying to take over his body but luckily Adebayo manages to activate the helmet's sonic boom to destroy the barn and trap the cow in its underground cavern now this cow is a giant caterpillar yeah I didn't even so, realize that until they mentioned it in the episode I was like oh how did you, how did you not realize that I don't know it just looked like a giant like deformed it could have been a butterfly for all I know like a giant deformed butterfly well I guess I, guess I was kind of off too I kept saying I was like man that thing's like a, well no that's what larva is right a caterpillar sort of no larva is like before caterpillar I think oh okay well I, I think it's I think it looks more like a larva than like a caterpillar yeah, well, it is I'm, a kettlebell. Yeah. Uh, well, he kept saying that, and I was all like, and I mean, all right, how do you not know that? Hold on, that's like really throwing me off. How do you not know that? I, was I just like, didn't hey, notice. I was like, I guess I was like disgusted about the way it looked. I know, I think it's gross looking. I'm glad I do want to say, <laughs> dang, I do want to say that um, James Gunn said the butterflies were his own like creation. He didn't get them for the DC Comics. So. Yeah, he said he like wrote a story about butterflies like back in the day. And, uh, he made it into something, and that he he found a way to implement it in this. So I thought I was like, that's "Oh, cool. that's a great." Yeah. yeah. Uh, now it's time for Peacemaker, Harcourt, and Vigilante to make their move, fighting off the alien creatures using an array of weapons. This is when the show's theme song starts playing, and it really got all. Awesome. Uh, while things seem to be going well at first, Harcourt and Vigilante both get felled by their enemies and fall to the ground. Oh. Vigilante I, gets I, I, shot in a scene. He throws a knife back, and kills the dude as he falls. Yeah, that, I was that's, like, that's the, part where I st- "That's the part where I was like stood up in the middle of a uh, spoons class." I was like, oh. <laughs> I started like freaking out. I was, I was like, like, "No, I know." You I. did not just. And then it starts the hardcore, and she's kicking butt and all this stuff, you know. And she gets yeah. shot twice with a shotgun, and she yeah. falls and got blood spitting out of her mouth. I was like, "No." <laughs> oh yeah, I was like, oh, I was like, oh my god. And then that, um, that's when I collapsed. <laughs> Like, oh, uh, <laughs> let's see. The, right before this, though, is one of my favorite things in this whole show action sequence. Um, 
Peacemaker's got a shield, right? Oh, yeah. A scene where he, like, uh, what does he do? He, like, uppercuts the dude with the shield. And he, like, flies up in the air and he takes his shield and, like, beats him down. Like, like that's one of the, like, most satisfying yeah, things I've seen in the social show. Oh, yeah. I, I love that shield. Definitely. Yeah. I don't I even know if he, what he did, but I think he just left it in the battlefield when he was leaving at the end of the episode. <laughs> but uh, let's continue on. While things seem to be going well at first, Harcourt and Vigilante both get felled by their enemies and fall to the ground. And even though Peacemaker heads down to the cow, he gets trapped. That was crazy. He fell down and all that stuff piled on top of him. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Adebayo, watching from the sidelines with Economos, decides to do something about this and make her mother proud by going out into the field and shooting down the remaining butterflies. Um, Because she always said, um, she always used to say, I'm not made for this stuff. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. And then, and then finally this up, she said, I'm made for this. And she goes out mm-hmm. there and she wrecks those butterflies, man. Oh, yeah. She like, well, one, yeah, I remember I started figuring out because one of the butterflies was going into a uh, hard court's mouth. Yeah. I started freaking out. I was like, dude, I was like, they're not about to make her butterfly butterfly. and they're not going to know it or something. They have to end up killing her. That would have been That's crazy. What I thought was going to happen. No, she ripped the butterfly out of her mouth and then shot it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, oh heck yeah. That was great. And well I well then I kinda of remembered I'm like, oh yeah, she's gonna be in uh, Black Adam. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, she's um, not going to Economos at this time tries to run after her and trips and like breaks his leg where the bone was like sticking out. I was like, Good lord. Yeah. Yeah, it, I had to like rewatch that scene couple of times because I didn't realize what was happening. I was like, what did he just trip and just like <laughs> Yeah. I was like, I'm and never he, stepping over a Anything ever? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll walk He's around like, it. <laughs> ah. yeah. And he like Just, craw- he crawled over there really fast to get rid of the helmet. But oh, um, yeah, yeah. she even stops on the alien creatures for possessing Harcourt by pulling it out of her mouth before taking Peacemaker's human torpedo helmet and heading down to help him stop the cow. Adebayo tries to uncover Peacemaker, but Detective Song, aka the Butterfly Golf, gets there first. Goff reveals to Peacemaker the truth behind the butterfly's invasion. They want to save humanity from destroying Earth like they did to their planet. She then asks Peacemaker to join their cause, but instead he kills the cow. But he doesn't kill the cow. He says, he says, activate human torpedo, and the Adebayo goes flying into the cow. <laughs> yeah. Just, I, don't know, right? I love her reaction when she, like, was seeing all the stuff poured on and she was on the ground. <laughs> yeah, I bet that crap is gross. We get those gut, you get the guts of that thing it's all over. You. Yeah, it's yeah. all it's awful. Ew. And, uh, Peacemaker and Adebayo head back after defeating Golf, the butterflies, and the cow. With the supervillain carrying an injured Harcourt in his arms, it's then when the fight is over that some familiar faces show up: Superman, Aquaman, the Flash, and Wonder Woman. At first, all that's visible is their outline because they're bathed in shadows, but then it's revealed that both Jason Momoa and Ezra Miller are in fact reprising their roles as Aquaman and The Flash, respectively. Uh, Peacemaker tells them that they're too late to help and tells Aquaman to go screw a fish. I'll say that because this is a family-friendly show. <laughs> but uh, screwing a fish is still family hey, <laughs> family friendly. Which the hero tells the Flash is the rumor he hates, even the speedster believes it too. Superman and Wonder Woman remain in shadow, even as Momoa and Miller are visible, but the cameos welcome one nonetheless. Um people were mad at this. Uh Snyder well, people were mad at this. They can get and over I, it. Let me let me uh, let me say this real quick. I got revealed that Batman and Cyborg were cut from this scene. Yeah, and I, I, I do. People were blaming Gunn for it at first. Like, like Gunn is Josh Whedon 2.0. And I'm like, don't you dare compare James Gunn to Josh Whedon. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, like, I, I mean, as far as the people know on the surface, is James Gunn had those, like, kind of pretty, you know, not the best uh, tweets to put out. Yeah. And that's awesome. Yeah, well, Josh did terrible things to just people in person. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so I'm like, don't compare them to that. And two, it, it's revealed that it looks like WB cut them out or something, or it, that's yeah. what it looks like currently. Because so. uh, uh, yeah. the picture they got with the bat with the Ben Affleck bat suit on. So yeah, it's interesting. Interesting, uh, but it, it, just, it just annoyed me. People, were, I, I don't like. Why were people mad about this? Because I, 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 I ain't even mad seen any. I haven't seen anybody mad about it. I just taking. Oh, I've report. seen it all over my uh my Twitter of people like well, Snyder, it's mostly Snyder fans that matter. It's like I can't believe they made that joke towards Aquaman and stuff. I'm like, dude, literally, there's like a whole thing with Lex Luthor peeing in a jar. 
Like, like remember that thing I sent you? And, you know, Joker, you know, offering Batman that, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to finish it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm like, I'm like, and y'all were cool with that, but like, you know, having a little humor and like Justice League guys like actually feel like they're actually friends and everything. Y'all don't like that. Like, mate, it, it, it annoys me. I hate, that's why, that's why I just hate Snyder fans. I, that's, I, that's probably the number one comic book group I hate more than anything else, honestly. Yeah. So, you like to watch well, my movie? <laughs> Shut up. I feel like that one movie he made that was like. It means you're a Snyder fan. I'm not a Snyder fan. You at like all. at least one no. thing made by Snyder. <sighs> <sighs> all right. <sighs> So the episode ends at tying loose up loose ends and setting the stage for possibly future, which I'll talk about later on in the DC news with Adebayo revealing the truth to the world about what she peacemaker and the team have been doing and also detailing her mother's suicide squad mission. This kind of like ruins the future of task force X and like any movies, like everyone knows about it now. So are they going public, but still going to be a thing. I don't know. Maybe who knows? Uh, I guess we'll find out sometime. Meanwhile, Judo Master, who is on the side of the butterflies, finds him slaughtered after the battle, teasing the possibility he could seek revenge on Peacemaker in the future. In terms of the team, Harcourt begins her road to recovery, and Vigilante heals up all well enough to enjoy blowing things up with Peacemaker again, while Economos returns to Bell Reeve Penitentiary. Um, I thought that scene was really nice, where Peacemaker goes into Harcourt's room, and she said, I heard you've been out there for days, and he says, yeah. He nods his head, yeah, and they hold hands. I was like, oh, that's nice. And yeah. you say, which I've seen enough TV shows to know, that that's a romantic cue. I don't think. Uh, that's what happens. That, why would else do they hold hands? Because they're, they're good friends. That's why. No. <laughs> I promise you. That's, they I don't promise. look like, that's not, they're this not is the couple. show where friends hold hands. I promise you, Darren, if you're in the hospital... You'd be like, and you know, you're like, no, oh, Landon, I'm, I'm so glad you came. No, you put I'm your hand on their shoulder. No, no, I put your hand, I put my hand on your hand, be like, dude, I got no, you. That's, man. No, no, I would, I would tightly squeeze it, be like, dude, we got this, okay? That's we like, yeah, this. but there's a different way to hold we're somebody's hand. You saw the way, you saw the way he grabbed her hand and he like rubbed her hand with his thumb. Yeah, it's a good friend. I no, mean, it's, it's not. Like, like, they'll be dating in the next season. It's not a guy on guy thing, but like, oh my god, they'll be dating. You're looking. No, they're not dating. I promise you, they're not. They will be. They already. We dating, already knew that he liked her, and she was kind of like. Oh. We already knew that he liked her, and she was kind of warming up to him, and they start calling yeah. each other by their first names, and then it's just it like escalated yeah. all the time. Well, they're really good friends now. And you could tell Darian, by the way they act to each other. Darian, if they're a couple, I'll wear a peacemaker helmet to school. Do it. <laughs> All right. But, and, oh. and you give me $20. <laughs> I ain't giving you 20 bucks. I'll wear a peacemaker helmet. That's ask, it. Ask Skylar when we see him, and he'll tell you. The Skylar think they shit? It, he probably shit does, because you. that's what... I've seen, I've seen 15 seasons of a show that has thousands of relationships in it. And I've seen oh, Smallville, which has like thousands of relationships in it. And I've seen every other TV show that stuff like this happens. That's a romantic cue, you can tell. By the music and by the way the scene itself worked and the context of the scene. I, I'm, I'm telling you... It's a romantic and, cue. And they are not going to be a couple. Yeah, they will. The episode's closing moments see Peacemaker at home giving Golf, the last surviving butterfly, the remnant of the sap they eat before Patrick Augie sits Patrick's Augie sits beside his son, showing that he will never stop haunting him. And that was a review the uh, recap of the episode. Uh yeah. Very, 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 very good episode. Um yeah. and that was right. Yeah. I, like I know. I give this I I know what I'll give this. Uh, you want to give your rating first or mine? Uh, low out of 10. I don't, right. I, don't need, yep. I don't need to explain. Yeah, you're fine. I'm going to give this uh, the real maximum number, which is I'm going to give this 10 out of 10 doves of peace. All right. 10, ten doves of peace. Okay. Yes. Um, all right. Well, that was Peacemaker. Man, what's, what would you rate this show as a whole? Uh, oof. I'd say a nine. All right, I was thinking the same one. Nine, nine point five. It's pretty good. Uh, I I, I want to give it a ten so bad because every episode was great. But those um, the one episode with uh, 
It's the episode before the bear. What episode was that? Was that episode six? Uh, no, that was episode seven. Was uh, with five the... was with the bear. Five. Okay, so four then. Yeah. Let me look. Hold up. Because well, because well, anyways, the episodes I said were very filler. Those just, I mean, even though I started rewatched them, and I did, and I more. That's true. I just, it's just, it's still kind of, it kind of took me out of it. But yeah. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna say a hot take right now. I'm, not, I'm about to say a hot take. The show's yeah, not I, better than One Division. I, 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 I need you to call me out if, if this is. I will. Okay. Tell me. I, I, I think this is better than any Marvel show right now. I'm gonna call you out. <laughs> yeah. You watch Daredevil? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, That's not. It's episode five. What is it? Is it? It's five. It is five. Yeah, the one's a gorilla. Yeah, it is five. I don't. I don't really. You said a bear. Um, Did I say a bear? I'm sorry. I meant a gorilla. My bad. No, Wandavision. This show was enjoyable because I mean it's James Gunn project. It, DC wise, this is the. Well, I like Suicide Squad still. Um, maybe I don't know equally as this. Like they're mm-hmm. equal to me. I can't yeah. choose one or the other. But um, this is the best DC. One of the best DC things that's ever made. James Gunn has yet again, killed it yet again. And uh, DC, comparing it to Marvel, Marvel's always going to have that special place. And I think WandaVision is really, really good. But Peacemaker does give it a run for its money. I can agree with that. <laughs> Peacemaker. I mean. I mean, yeah. I mean, I can get you on. Know, I I can, you know, I might. I I am not gonna fully disagree with you on that at all. I just, I it, it's. I feel so weird about it. You know, let's what I'm saying? Give, let's give it a little while, like a few weeks, and then. Yeah, I, like, yeah, I mean, yeah. I, that's probably the best thing to say. Hey, right now, but I, I just, I mean, that shows I really liked it. So. Yeah. So go do do go check it out. Mm-hmm. All right, let's get on some DC news before we end this off. Uh, HBO Max is making a movie, a live action movie about a pair of heroes in DC Comics, shape shifting superheroes, the Wonder Twins. So, uh, so the Wonder Twins there, they're present in the old DC Super Friends show from a while, long, while back, oh, like 80s, 90s show. I think it was 80s, mm-hmm. 90s, um, and maybe 70s. But uh, the Wonder Twins, they're present. They were in Smallville for two episodes, and uh, they were in. They've been in. They've been in a lot of stuff. There's brother and sister, uh, I think. Yeah, and they can shape shift into animals and stuff. Yeah, and it's certain they're making a live action movie of it. And, hey, James Gunn can make this perfectly. Like they're the kind of heroes James Gunn could do. Oh yeah, I hope um think he might be on it or no. Oh, no. no he ain't I don't know. It, he did he did announce that um after Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Three is done, he'll focus on DC television. Mm-hmm. So uh James Gunn's not going anywhere. And DC, Warner Brothers loves it. Apparently, right after Suicide Squad came out, like right when it hit theaters, they immediately came to him and asked him, What do you want to do next? And he said he's got a peacemaker show. And I'm like, they better do that again. They're like, What do you want now? They're like, oh, Rat Catcher 2 show. And they're like, okay, we'll give you all the money you want to make this show. Uh, King Shark movie. Because they know, even, it didn't, even if it didn't make a lot of money, they know people love the, this stuff. Like, oh, yeah, it's how, like the best thing. I've never enjoyed um, DC so much in my life. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I Besides, mean, like, that, playing and, the Arkham games. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. For a while, DC was on top, uh, video game was. Has and um and now you could probably make an argument of if Marvel is better, not better. game not game wise right now. <laughs> well, you don't think game? You think DC still on top? Based off like newer games, like stuff that's happening right now, like currently, DC's Marvel's got Spider-Man. Gotham Knights and Gotham Knights Marvel's coming out. Spider-Man and Miles Morales. Yeah, Mar- yeah, but that's Marvel. previous stuff. That I'm talking about currently Marvel. right now. Marvel's on Guardians top. Of the Marvel, Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy. No. Gotham Knights yeah. is about to happen, and that's what everyone's looking forward to. Everyone stop talking okay. about Guardians of the Galaxy now until it right. gets more news about the second one. I'm wondering, okay, so I'm guessing Suicide Squad is next year then? Yeah, remember they got pushed back. Okay, well, that's that question. Suicide Squad or Marvel Spider-Man 2? 
Oh, Spider-Man yeah, 2. But we'll, we'll ask, yeah, okay. Because, I mean, that uh, I don't, I've never played Suicide Squad before. I played the first Spider-Man game that's Jordan. Yeah. Well, um, I'm guessing, I mean, just just thing off the top of my head, God, I mean, Suicide Squad is going to be the same as Gotham Knights, but just villains. So uh, more, no, I don't think... Well, I, know, I, I know it's more like a, it's just a story in that rather than like a yeah. live Gotham Knights. Story. Gotham Knights is not a live service game, though. I know it's not, but like it... It's kind of weird. It seems like it. It seems like it, but it's not. They said uh, they may possibly add a post hero. I learned so much information about that game. Um, there's, it's it's going to be really fun. Have, the, Bat, the Batcave does not exist in this. It's the Belfry. And it's something different. Uh, but I don't know much about the game. We, we're, we should be getting a CGI trailer here in the next few weeks with the release date. Yeah. So, uh, But anyway, back to what I was saying. Uh, they're making the Wonder Twins movie. Be interesting to watch. It has connect, they have connections to um, different stuff. They have a monkey named Gleek. He's a green monkey. And at the end of the Super Friends show, he would always like he'd be the running gag. He'd always make like he always like break something at the end of an episode, and they all look at him, and it'd play, it'd play this like funny theme song, and it would end. It better, uh, it better, better do that. They do that into the movie. <laughs> <laughs> he breaks one of the Wonder Twins' arms, and then it's like da 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 da, and it just ends. Yeah, yeah, please, please do. <laughs> Uh, I'd kill for that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they're making a Wonder Twins movie. Uh, Matt Reeves has expressed interest in using Mr. Freeze for the Batman sequel. <sighs> Don't tell me that. <laughs> uh, no. He wants it to happen. Uh, Robert Pattinson also said he wants to do Calendar Man or Court of Owls, which Court of Owls would be awesome. And he mm-hmm. also said he wants to have Robin show up at some point. Yeah, I know. Uh, no freaking uh, Robert. Uh... Robert Pattinson, and he said he's very interested in doing a like a thirteen year old Robin. I'm like, please, that would be yeah. awesome. Yeah, let's watch him die on screen by the Joker. Yeah, that's what, by Barry yes. Keegan's Joker. Let me see. No, don't don't say that. You don't. You think you you say that he's gonna be. You don't. You think he's gonna be a Joker, but the no, dude literally know. looks like a psychopath. <laughs> yeah, but I, he ain't Joker though. How do you he know? Ain't going crazy. If you looked at um, all right. If you looked at Joaquin Phoenix. Would you be like he's not Joker? No, I could I could get by with him. No, back when he when he wasn't super skinny for the movie and stuff, when he had some weight and he has short hair, would you be like, is he he's like old man? You're like, he's he's not he's not Joker. I, I could see him as Joker. Though. He wouldn't look like Joker. All right, I could see him as Joker. all right. Let's say um, I've heard people use the argument for Robert Pattinson saying like, hey, if you saw him, you didn't see him as Batman, did you? And I was like, yeah. Have you seen Barry? Yeah. And have you seen uh, Barry Cogan's other movies besides Eternals? <sighs> no. Exactly. In Eternals, he wasn't even that bad. He played the character he was supposed to. Druig. Yeah, he played the one he didn't like. He didn't really like enjoy being with those people. And he just wanted to do his own thing and advance humanity in his own way. Yeah. But he was just like, he was like the like person at a family reunion that's like, emo and always on their phone <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i but he's got the smile to play joker and with like he's supposed to have prosthetics on and stuff i mean and it's the same person that did the prosthetics for the penguin that's supposed to be doing his yeah i know yeah i mean hey maybe he's gonna look just unrecognizable because i mean i still can't believe that's called I, I want the i want the big chin i want the long chin <laughs> long nose <laughs> oh okay yeah i mean great I want but, like obviously he's gonna have some prosthetics on his mouth. Mm-hmm, yeah, I, I'll give I'll give it a I'll give it a chance, but like if it sucks. Um, I'm gonna call it. Oh, well, he's only it. in like one scene apparently, and well, we all, we might only hear his voice, but he's got a prosthetics person in the credits of the movie according to um, pictures. Mm. So I don't know. Okay. And he's he's listed as unseen Arkham inmate, but you wouldn't get that kind of actor to just play an unseen mm. inmate. Why was he unseen yeah. anyway? This is his voice. Yeah, so I swear if we if I hear it be like, eh, eh. <laughs> he gives like a freaking <laughs> Jared Leto laugh. <laughs> oh, like, last no. I hear a Jared, if I hear a Jared Leto laugh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna be like, no, man. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, uh. <laughs> what? What? Oh, my. how can you like that? I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah that is there's no way. Dumbest. Anyway, oh, let's yeah. let's end this off with some good news. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourself, buckle up, because Peacemaker has been renewed for season two. Uh, yes, 
Be more excited. We're getting season two of Peacemaker. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, the rumor was that Bane was going to be the big villain of season two. James Gunn came out and said that he has no idea where these people are getting their sources from, but they need to um, read what they type before they post it. (laughs) Yeah. And Uh, he said he doesn't even know what's going to happen in season two. Yeah, you, you sent me you, you sent me a text. You seem pretty mad about it. That's not that Bane ain't coming. Well, and don't then, you um, want to see Bane versus Peacemaker? How awesome that would be. What about Gorilla? Oh, uh, no, never mind. I'm gonna say, what about Gorilla? Grow? What about that Gorilla that skate? I'm like, wait, no, that thing. I forgot. I was in, He's I dead. In <laughs> yeah, I forgot. He got chainsaw. Um, yeah. Hey, yeah, who knows? I mean, who knows what's gonna happen? He said he doesn't even know what's gonna happen. So, yeah. I'll, I'll, hey, man, Vigilante has got to come back. Yeah, Hard- hardcore as well. I don't know about Economos. Most likely, but uh, and add a bio. Let's see her come back. Mm. Uh, but yeah, well, she's back. No, she probably. I don't know. Her story arc's kind of finished. Uh, yeah, but I don't know. I guess we'll mm-hmm. see. Yeah. All right, and that's uh, that's it for DC news. And uh, I don't think we have anything for gaming stuff. Are you kidding me? I, 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 man, are you? Are you, are you trolling right now? Are you serious? You, you think we've got another of our gaming news? Uh, no, because I'm not talking about Gotham Knights. Oh, I'm talking about Marvel's Avengers. No one right? cares. <laughs> what do you mean no one cares? Not anymore. Good stuff, good stuff is happening, and I'm I'm telling you, uh, I said this once, I'll say it again. <laughs> the game is turning around. No, I swear. I promise. Okay, well, here, what do you want me to start with? This week, this week's uh, blog or the February development update? Um, the development update because that's the important stuff. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, well, if you had to review this, um, you want to talk about that at the end or just from what you read already? Uh, out of ten, out of ten. The like development update. Yeah. Of like what it said, five and a five out of ten. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll be honest. I'm probably I'm gonna be I'm, I'm gonna be I'm gonna say I'm a six. Six. Uh, I know you were really disappointed of how it's because I don't like how it starts off either. But I'm glad they kind of just got that out of the out of the way. But it, I mean, so I'll just go on and people know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is what they say, and I quote. We know many of you have been eagerly wait- waiting for our next formal roadmap for Marvel's Avengers. We are ready to reveal the next full roadmap, but we can share some news about our next update and how we're improving and changing the game in the near and medium term. So I know that really. <laughs> I, know, I know you did not like hearing that, and I, I ain't like here. I'm sure nope. many other. <laughs> Only thing I care about once they talk about a roadmap, I'll look at the roadmap and something I'm interested in. I'll start interested. I'll be interested in the game again. Yeah, yeah honestly, it's almost I mean, lost I, me. So I'm yeah, like right there. I, I was making fun of you for saying that, but at the same time, I don't blame you for saying that. You know what I'm saying? Because that's what most people want. Nobody wants to read through all this. This like super fans like me will, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, but so I'm I'm hoping the roadmap will come out, and so people can get that visual and say, "Oh, okay, this is something I'm interested in." Mm-hmm. But luckily, this is kind of something I wanted them to do in uh, 2022, and and we'll, I'll talk about this in a minute. Just fixing the game, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, and because uh, like. Because I wanted a like a cool villains update where we get three more new villain sectors, a bunch of new enemy like three brand new enemy types, like for like the aim robots or whatever. Yeah, and just like more different stuff to add variety and maybe like a, a three new mission missions, right? Mid mm-hmm. type mission types. Mm-hmm. How cool would that would have been? Kind of bring the quality back into it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, make it less repetitive. And um, it seems like that's what they're doing here with changing up a couple of systems, like with uh, they're they're changing up shipments a bit, which I think will be very interesting because I I like how it is now, but if they can improve on it, make it better somehow, I'm I'm down with that. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, when is this coming out? Uh, this is called this is patch two point three. It's releasing March of this year. 
And uh, it says they're going to bring Nick Fury back in the shield, which I think is a that's good the thing. only good thing about this. Yeah, that's a good thing. I'm very happy with that. Made. Um, this comes with, and they also mentioned this comes with much needed re- rework of the war table and the mission select system. We're changing how to find, select, and launch missions on the leveling journey throughout the Avengers initiative. Good. So it seems like they're going to just this next update is going to just. They're going to be like, oh, we're giving you Nick Fury because that's what you wanted, but we're also abandoning the game. (laughs) Yeah. Oh, yeah. Cool. He's going to be in it, Uh, but uh, (laughs) we're done. Yep. Uh, We're going to go focus uh, on Guardians 2 now. Yeah. New shipments systems added in 2.2 has been really successful at providing another path to cosmetic rewards while rewarding play. Been been really successful because people spend all their money on credits in order to... What are you you talking about? This is shipment. This is units. Oh, well, I'm sitting here. Oh, my God. That's how, uh, I, that's how much I don't even care anymore. <laughs> I don't care, man. You just you just saw me. Just no, I just don't me. like this game. <laughs> not even. Well, that's good. Not right now. Well, it's not. It's I'm okay. still boycotting it. Okay. Well, why are you boycotting it? <laughs> it's not, you, you literally did not. I think they can make up for it with MCU skins that no one wants to buy. What, dude? You literally saw that Thor Ragnarok skin, and you're yeah. Like, and then I oh, looked at it further, and I was up. like, "He's not supposed to have me on here. You should have Stormbreaker." Because I well, dude, because, well, not dude, even that. He could he not dude. even have a hammer at all because he didn't have his hammer that whole movie. Oh my God, Darian! <laughs> it's a skin. I don't care. I don't like it. They're not change. Uh, they're not going to change the whole movement. Plus, and fight Thor looks so weird with look. short hair in this game anyway. <laughs> oh my God! Oh God! Okay. Over it. Over. Fairly. And literally, they say they're going to come up with a new way to have units in the game for free. So, don't, I mean, I, uh, I you know, don't care. I hate it. <laughs> Last, update we exper- Last update, we experimented with allowing players to earn weekly rewards from uh, completing a mega level threat and raid each. Of- oh, by the way, I do want to mention <laughs> the raid sucks. I, I, mean, I wanna, you know what else sucks? <laughs> the whole game. That's that's. Uh, that's oh I yeah, guess. but mainly. <laughs> Are you gonna say Spider Man? I swear to God, no. <laughs> Spider Man. Spider Man sucks in this game. Yeah, I know. Tell you. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> so I, I, well, if you talk about the dang the air web swinging, I'm gonna call you off. Like, right you there. need to post that video that you took. On oh, that, I, 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 I thought about posting that on our Twitter. I thought about posting that. The and you got to say I'm, us us waiting for a roadmap. <laughs> uh, us waiting. I know. Can't wait for a roadmap. But I don't want to like, get hate towards the community because I love I, – I mean, I don't love the game, but I like playing it. You know, I play – It's my dad was clowning me because the day I got home, he got Horizon, and I went on to play Avengers. <laughs> Wow. But, it, but it was only for like 30 minutes. I swear it was like 30 minutes. And the rest of the we need to have it an was- episode called the combo burrito, the Avengers intervention. Uh, I sit and talk to you about all the bad things about this game and why you like it. <laughs> just accept it. Like, <laughs> no, I know the game has its flaws. And I, I, yeah, I told you, I played it for like 30 like I'm going to be a minutes. loyal fan to Square Enix. So I, they I make, just, they I, make I Final Fantasy. For, I got it for the shipments, okay? And plus, it was literally double resources weekend. The shipments were half priced. You know what I'm saying? If I get introduced to an option to play Horizon Forbidden West... Or Marvel's Avengers, I, I, dude. I, that's I would choose Horizon for Ben West. Yes, I would too. That's why I played over. the game. That's why I played the game for twenty minutes. That's all you I still did. played it first. <laughs> I play. Oh my god! You I played it after. Like, I was all like, okay, I'm gonna play this for twenty minutes because you know, and I haven't played it the rest of the weekend. And right. like lot- everybody, if you want to see the Avengers intervention, please let me let us know on social media. DM us, comment under this YouTube video. I mean, come on. Uh, okay. We need to fix this. <laughs> well, well, anyways, I need to finish off the announcements with, because um, it's going to air Sunday. I do want to say, I hope y'all enjoyed y'all's double resource weekend and half price shipments. I also would like to mention that um, challenge cards are half priced at uh, 500 units instead of uh, 1,000, which I'll be honest, I'm going to tell you right now. I think a lot of people would go back in, and you agreed with me on this, so you don't don't hear deny it. I think a lot of people would go back in if they marked everything half price permanently. Uh, I I didn't agree with that. Those those doctor 
Photoshop. You, you, you Photoshop. really like you like the message. You like the message. That's Photoshop. <laughs> Anyways, was it real? Hey, I, cause thing is, I it, am not the werewolf. <laughs> but I mean, you, I mean, but seriously, would you, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I guess a thousand is a lot. Because you would spend more money to buy more skins, and and you, I mean, you'd be more willing to buy a challenge card. Oh, five bucks for this challenge card? Now? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Instead yeah. of you spending like like ten or ten dollars just for that, or and, I say, know, ooh, five bucks to not spend on Marvel's Avengers and to put it to good use buying food so I don't starve to death. <laughs> oh my god! Well, <laughs> you know what I'm trying to say, but like I just I think. Because I, I mean, they've put a price down on outfits before, so yeah. I think if they if they did another like really good one, good one, I mean, I think that would kill it. I mean, I I think that would be a good smart business decision. Mm-hmm. Like, I know they need to make money off the game, but right now they gotta bring players back in. You know, yeah. that's the goal. That's the goal right now. Bring players back in because you I mean you have these new games come out like Horizon. You look at their dang Twitch. I mean, there's like a hundred people streaming Avengers, hundreds of thousands doing Horizon. I know that's a new game and stuff, but Avengers needs to be in like the ten thousands. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it, it, it can't be a hundred and this be a live service game. It, it just can't. Like the numbers for Destiny is like it, insane. Here, I'll, I'll look at I'll look at them right now as we are recording. I mean, uh, viewer, 12,000 viewers. So, I mean, I know 100,000 is probably a big number, I said, but like it, it needs to be in like, oh no, I did say, I did, I did say 10,000. So, at least I would like Marvel's Avengers to be at least 5,000, you know? Yeah. So, and I mean, I just think that would be a good. Well, it was Marvel's Avengers, right? 94. 94 viewers right now. You know what I'm saying? As much as I want to say that it kind of deserves it right now, no. it is a very low number. Yeah, very low number. And uh, you, you say, <laughs> you, you, you're saying the game deserves it. They put No, I said that they don't really deserve it. But yeah. it's still not a game that it's, deserves 10,000. Yeah. And every criticism people have, I mean, I think some people are like kind of a bit too harsh on the game sometimes, but like I, I can get behind with stuff like with, I mean, I I kind of hate we still don't have a roadmap. That really annoys me. I, mean, like, I don't even care if we even got like the full thing, but like we had it up till um, May or something. You know what I'm saying? Kind of like how they did with Hawkeye. Where it yeah. went up to May, then like the next month after that, they showed like the rest of it. I've been fine with that. I just want but, a thing at the first of every month where they reveal what's happening that month. Yeah, and I feel bad for um, Xbox, PC, and uh, I guess if you want to include Stadia players, that I mean they haven't gotten a character since August. Do they not have Nintendo? Do they not have Marvel's Adventures on Nintendo Switch? Uh no, <laughs> I was surprised that they tried to do a cloud thing though. I mean, they got Guardians to run on Switch, so maybe. Could you imagine I mean, playing Marvel's Avengers on a Nintendo Switch? It's, I mean, no, they gotta get the bugs out on everything else before they, <laughs> before then, yeah, before they happen. But, but I mean, you know what I'm saying? Because I, I, if they can, that, I, I mean, that's gonna be that's that would, I like that be a goal for Avengers. By the end of the year, I want to see that number of viewers go to like five thousand. Yeah, five thousand or a thousand. You know, I thought I like to see maybe a thousand before the year, year ends. You know, I'll go easy a thousand. So let's let's hope. We'll maybe see. when a new character comes out, maybe it'll start popping, and they can just if they can make some right business decisions and. And what from sounds like this update, I, I know I didn't go full depth into it, but for you know, please check out the blog yourself. I'll post it in Facebook and everything. Mm-hmm. It sounds like it sounds like oh. they're doing quality of life improvements. Oh, that, that was the goal. That was the goal I wanted to do this year. So. Um, I do want to announce something also. Yes, Today sir. is Bruce Wayne's birthday. 
<laughs> what? Yeah. This is his birthday, really? The official Batman Day is March 30th, which was announced in the 75th anniversary. But most of all, not characters DC Comics have an actual birthday within the continuity. And February 19th is Bruce Wayne's birthday, as revealed in 1939. It... So, happy birthday, Bruce Wayne. Definitely not yeah. related to Batman in any way whatsoever. Yes. Uh, happy birthday, Mr. Mr. Wayne. Happy birthday. <laughs> Happy birthday, Master Wayne. Master Wayne. <laughs> We're making fun of Michael Caine oh. now. Oh, God. I hate so. no, one, no, of the, no. one of the oldest actors in Hollywood right now. <laughs> is, he still, is, he still, is he still doing work? Yeah. Okay. Well, good for him. Michael but Caine. We can't beat the Chad Rosemary Harris. So. You can't, you this can't is not that. Alfred. <laughs> That's not, well, she, oh, he said still, actors, still, like the oldest actors still no, in work. Oh, no, oh. Well, he's still, he said he's one of them, but I was starting talking about Alfred's. <laughs> oh, just Alfred's. Oh, well, yeah, that. And yeah, you just meant just in general. Rosemary Harris could be Alfred. You never know. You never know about that. Well, <laughs> anyway. You never, yeah. um, well, are you done? I, I, Yes. Your yes. unnecessary and incessant rant about Marvel's Avengers. Yeah, I know. I looked at the time <laughs> talking about it at twelve sixteen. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, it's twelve thirty now. Yeah, it's, I have something else to talk uh, about too before we're done with this. Oh gosh, okay. Well all right. I, all. I got an announcement. I got an announcement to make. Oh, is it the announcement or is it something? It's, something <laughs> it's not it is not the Okay. The, uh, the announcement related to uh, a, a duo, a duo of characters that go up against a group of six people. It, it has to do with that was the most vague I could make it. Uh, oh. <laughs> they're like, excuse me. In due time, ladies and gentlemen. Anyway, me and Landon, we got ourselves a job. We are junior psychiatrists at Arkham Asylum. We're going to be surveying patients' files and going over them one by one for you guys and recording it on our extra beef part of the podcast. Uh, the first episode is releasing this upcoming Wednesday, and we're going to be discussing none other than the Joker. Because what better way to start than with the clown prince of crime himself? <laughs> so yeah. be sure to look for that. Be sure to look for a trailer. Uh, either Monday or Tuesday. Uh, <laughs> Whenever I can stop being lazy. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, but I mean, we're, we're I'm I'm almost done with it. So, but shit, I'm, I think it's pretty cool. I guess. <laughs> you guess. Oh, uh, well, we'll know. see. I hope, I hope y'all. He like made it. the Spider-Man trailer, so there's potential. Yes, it is potential. Um, but this, we don't know how long this series will be, um, <laughs> but. Once we figure that out, we'll let you guys know. But it'll be at least ten episodes. Yeah, at least ten. And uh, and I mean, I mean, I'd say if it ends off, who knows? Maybe we'll, we'll do maybe the, we'll do the Bell Reeve uh, files, uh, where we go get a yeah. job at Bell Reeve and let's talk about flash films. <laughs> oh please, God. okay. Well, yeah, I mean, Gorilla Grodd. Okay. No. Oh. <laughs> Barack Obama. <laughs> oh, man. I, Inside I'm, jokes. I, I might post. I might post that on the Facebook <laughs> instead. But we are releasing it. It'll be called the Arkham Files, and I hope you guys do enjoy that. And uh, that's all I got to talk about. Yeah, yeah. I got. I got nothing else to talk about. All right. I'm so ready. let's get ready to end this off. Thank you, right. everybody, for joining us this week. I mean, what an episode. We talked about Peacemaker. We talked about Doctor Strange trailer. We talked about tons of news, DC. Uh, too long. We talked way too long on Marvel's Avengers, and we Can announced shut <laughs> our Arkham Files. We, we, we have a the fan Ar base. You know, from the Marvel Arkham <laughs> Files, I bet none of our fans are like Marvel's Avengers. They're just like, cut it off right when the gaming starts. They, they cut it off right when, as soon as I start <laughs> making a peep. <laughs> they they cut it off. All right, what is this? You don't want. You don't want um, Arkham Files also kind of sounds like the X Files. This is our version of the X Files. <laughs> the Arkham Files. Oh wow! Who who would have guessed? I know. Anyway, um, we got that coming this upcoming Wednesday. Um, also got a review of the Batman coming in a few weeks. Um, excited for that. We're gonna have Spillman on for that, and possibly um, a couple other people. Uh. And 
yeah, I think that's all the important stuff. Check out check out last week's extra beef for you with Spillman uh, for the second time, talking about Cullen Bunn's Shadow Man, which is a comic series from Valiant Comics. Um, and also check out all the previous comp video episodes. But if you guys have any questions, comments, corrections, or concerns, you can contact me on Instagram at DarienH4404. It's D-A-R-I-E-N-H-4404. Or on Facebook at the Comp Book Burrito colon official page. Highly recommend going over there. It's our most active social media channel. Also on Twitter at the CB Burrito, capital C, capital B, capital B and Burrito. Uh, yeah, you can contact me at Spider Ernest for Lennon on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. And, and uh, we also have a official Instagram page at the Comic Book Burrito. You know, that's I mean that's more for a notification type deal of new new projects we're working on, new episodes. But um, me and Darren both recommend Twitter and Facebook. We are very interactive. We'll we'll uh, contact you back as soon as we can. Yeah. And uh, I would mention the Patreon, but I'm not going to. <laughs> oh, is it, is, it, is it still on its way? It's in the works. It's on the way. <laughs> no, it's in the works. Oh, my I'm God. I'm lazy. Um, so. But, yeah, I think that's it. So we'll get ready to get out of here. In brightest day and darkest night, no evil shall escape our sight. Bye, guys. See you. Excelsior. Excelsior.